Yes. It's wet. I come for this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you like that one? Okay. It's taller. All right. Taller for a tall person. I saw things were fake. No, they're real. No, they're real. <laughs> I was like, why are they leaking? They're not real. Yeah. I don't know. They look fake. Right? They look fake. <laughs> Anybody ever mentioned the word gay or gay people? I would blush. <laughs> or blush and excuse myself to go to the restroom. Um, by the time I was 18, I moved to London and I was working in a record store. And in the late 70s, it was an incredible time in London with music because punk had really burst out and this whole slew of so-called new wave bands that followed suit and a lot of really kind of eccentric and interesting songwriters. I mean, people, people from like The Clash to um, Ian Dury and the Blockheads and the Jam and it was a, every week there was like a great album, The Pretenders, all these American people were coming, the Blondie and Television, Talking Heads and and suddenly Marianne Faithful had reappeared with this whole new voice. <laughs> and um, it was really a, a, an incredible time. And the, the, my co-worker in this record store, which was called, which was called Recordsville, <laughs> was, uh, was Harry Clark, who had been the uh, lead singer of the Sex Pistols at some point, but had been fired, and um, he was now working in this record store. Um, Rec Recordsville was the last store in London where you could ask to listen to a record and we would play it for you on these turntables. We had these four turntables set up alongside one wall and people would come in and listen to stuff on headphones. Uh, all the latest rock records. At least most people did. Well, one Saturday it was very crowded in the store and the, the door, the front door flew open and in came this sort of whirl of white fabric, dressed like a belly dancer, and leading from the hips was the, the human equivalent of a flamingo. Well, Harry leaned over to me and said, say hello to Trevor. <laughs> hello, Trevor. Hello, Harry. <coughs> Who's this? This is David, Trevor. Be nice to him, he's just gotten out of an orphanage. <laughs> Hello, David. I'd like to listen to a record on the turntable. Do you have lies with a Z? Uh, As a matter of fact, we do, says Harry. Female vocals under M, Dave. And I believe over the pond they refer to it as Z. I know. <laughs> So I go over and I get this Liza Minnelli record and I put it on and Harry leans over to me and says, get ready. <laughs> Trevor sort of held on to the headphones and this is a completely packed store of all these kind of rock people and Trevor sort of swaying going into this alternate state with a top voice. He starts singing. It's lies with a Z, not least with an S, cause least with an S go snaz. Oh, I love this pie, it's so clever. <laughs> if my name were Ada, I'd be Ada. Even backwards, I'd be Ada. I love that! <laughs> Harry leans over to me and says, You think he might be gay? I blushed and kind of shifted into the shadows behind the counter. No, lies are 
that he whooshes around and says, it's excellent, I'll take it, and I wrapped it up. And, <laughs> and Trevor left. Well, every time he would come to the store, he'd have something completely different on. And he was, he was both sort of delightful to me and deeply alarming. Because unbeknownst to anybody in the store, I also knew all the words to Liza Minnelli. <laughs> in fact, I also knew them in French. I had this record of, of Liza Minnelli singing in Paris. And I was sort of fearful that if I was around Trevor for too long, this flamingo in me would come <laughs> bursting out and be flapping around the store and I would never be able to get it back into, into its cage. <laughs> or that Trevor would somehow recognize that I was one of his own. I mean, I was okay if Harry was with me, but what if I was on my own? Then that day arrived. The door flew open. The, the store was empty. And Trevor wishes in, wearing an Indian turban, and a nun's habit with this ukulele <laughs> stashed over his shoulder. But he comes up to the counter, and instead of asking for a record, he hops onto the counter. I was like, Trevor, you can't do that. You can't sit on the counter. I'm already here. <laughs> he reached around to his ukulele. He said to me, look into the eyes of Trevor. <laughs> and he began to sing to me. You're living in the world like it was somebody else's house, but it's not somebody else's house, it's yours. If all the world's a stage, which obviously it's not, <laughs> but just suppose it was, and play. Before you know, life's winding to a close. So pick up all your fears and toss them in the air. <laughs> La 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 You're living in the world like it was somebody else's house. But it's not somebody else's house. It's yours. <laughs> oh.